Thank you. Good evening. So I recently unearthed this third grade picture of myself. And this picture holds a lot of sentimental value for me because even at the tender age of nine, I was very aware of the person that I wanted to be. Now, I didn't have all of the roles or all of the um, connection points in my blueprint just so, but I clearly remember knowing the spirit of the work that I wanted to do that would bring joy and purpose to my life and joy to the lives of others. So this picture is special. And I remember the day that it was taken. On this particular day, I was invited by my principal to represent my school as well as my grade. Our school was getting award and award for exemplary education, and we had some federally elected leaders that were coming to our school for a tour. And so I vividly remember waiting to talk to the entire assembly just like this about what my career aspirations were. I saw my mom sitting on the front row. as She was blowing kisses and sneaking waves to me. And I remember on that day, I wasn't nervous. My palms weren't sweaty. And when my principal called my name, I boldly stepped up to the microphone and looked out across the audience and said, when I grow up, I want to be an astronaut, beautician, and work the slush machine at Kmart. <laughs> the silence following that declaration was deafening. My principal's face literally dropped. Then my teachers, their jaws went slack. I could see my mother's eyes bug as she gave me her classic, girl, what did you just say? <laughs> Look. And I could start to hear the buzz of conversation as my classmates begin to giggle and to snicker about what I had just shared. I heard people say things like, did she just list three professions? Slush machine worker, is that even a profession or occupation? But you know, I don't believe that the path to our blueprint is unfolded all at once. And I honestly believe that nine-year-old Shannon prophetically knew some of the things that 39-year-old Shannon would stand before you today having done and accomplished. So I believe throughout our journey from childhood, throughout our lives, we get these glimpses of purpose and superpowers. We get these glimpses into who we are and what our joy and our purpose would be derived from. So maybe I'm not an astronaut and I don't send people to the moon. But as the founder and the principal of Shannon Cohen Inc., every day I've committed my life to helping people and organizations and communities defy the gravitational pull of systemic inequities and situational circumstances and circumstances of birth that try to contort and confine and to restrict what people can do and achieve and to be. Now everybody knows that a beauty salon is a safe haven, right? A beauty salon is the place that we can go where you can come in looking one way and leave looking and feeling fabulous. At the beauty salon, you can talk to your beautician about anything. You can bear your soul. You can talk about it all. So maybe I'm not a beautician, but I started the Tough Skin, Soft Heart blog because I wanted to create a safe space where leaders that were often overextended, could talk honestly and transparently about the toll and the cost that comes with the life of being a difference maker. Nothing warms my heart or brings me more joy than seeing leaders that come in burnt out and on the brink of burnout leave my webinars or my seminars looking and feeling and ready to do the fabulous with their gifts and their call. Now let me talk about this slush machine working at Kmart. When I grew up, I grew up in, on the east side of Detroit and on the, at the intersection of Otter Drive and Sherwood where I grew up, there was a Kmart. And so I would often walk there with my grandmother and my mother and there was one particular woman I remembered in particular. And she was a customer service representative and I saw her serve in other places within the department store but I specifically remember her working the ice cream in the slush machine area. And every time that I would go there, she would treat my 88 cent slush purchase as if it was the most important financial transaction that Kmart would encounter that day. And I wanted to be her. She was my first community-based example of what it meant to be attentive to detail, of people care, and what it meant to be excellent in your craft. And so even now, when I think about the organizations and the movements and the initiatives I've had the honor to birth and scale and to be part of, 
I used those childhood experiences with her as a litmus test to remind me of the excellence that I want to show in how I treat people, how I connect with people, and how I'm attentive to people in, their, in serving them. So I'm not the only superhero in the room. I believe that all of us, we're ordinary people that are seeking to use our gifts to make extraordinary contributions for the shared destiny of us all. So as we're all here tonight thinking about our blueprint and how we want to connect the dots, I'd like to leave you with two things to think about in your own journey. The first is to think about what it would take for you to live at the intersection of joy and purpose. So often I encounter leaders that are living at the intersection of everything else. We know as leaders how to live at the intersection of obligation and duty. We know how to live at the intersection of got to and don't want to. But I honestly believe that it is when we find ourselves in that sweet spot space of living at the intersection of joy and purpose that we can really be transformative, not just in our lives, but in the lives of others. So I'm curious. How might revisiting some of your childhood conversations, memories, dreams, journals, and experiences help you to live at the intersection of joy and purpose in this season of your blueprint? The second thing is the importance of speaking life to the dreams of your own soul. See, I'm of the mindset that our ears and our hearts are connected to our mouths and that we will believe what we say about ourselves more than what we would believe about what others have to say about us. And so as fellow superheroes in this room, it's important that we speak life to the dreams of our soul even before other people get it, understand it, appreciate it, or embrace it. I find it so ironic that many of the very things that people giggled about that fateful day in the third grade at that honor roll assembly today are pillars of my competitive advantage in the marketplace. So I'm curious, how might speaking life to the dreams of your own soul right now when it's just a dream be critical in this stage of your blueprint? So as I close, whenever I write my Tough Skin Soft Heart blog, I always like to leave readers with something to think about and to ponder even beyond the conversation, and I love to do that today. Is adulting getting in the way? of you really walking in the fullness of your gifts and your talents? Might it be time to revisit some of the conversations you had in childhood? Because childhood is one of those unique, special, precious seasons in our lives that are often accompanied with some of our most limitless thinking and often accompanied with us being unfettered with our perception of self and what we can be and do especially as it relates to the opinions and the perceptions and the pressures from other people. So I hope you're inspired today as you think about your blueprint between your X and your Y to go back to those early conversations that you've had with yourself and to let that ignite you to engage all of your superpowers, to live at the intersection of joy and purpose, and to speak life to the dreams of your own soul. Thank you.